NBA playoffs are in full swing, and the Celtics have now taken a commanding 2-0 to zero lead to start off the seven-game series in the finals. Uh, that's very exciting, looking at that whole matchup uh, and everything that's going on in, with, on with that. Uh, also, college baseball super regionals have been very interesting, a lot of fun to watch. If you haven't been watching, uh, then you probably don't know who is on their way to Omaha and who isn't, but we're going to get into that, uh, as well as talk about a dynasty that we love talking about on this show. And we're going to get into the NHL playoffs, the, the Stanley Cup finals, and looking at Florida and how they took a pretty commanding game one win away from the Oilers. And then we will also get to our two-minute drill. So much more. This is Rising to the Occasion, presented by Herd at Sports. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me go ahead and bring in my co-host for the evening, the man from Sioux City, Iowa, over on the other side of the city from me. Jeremy, how are we doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty good. Then how to, it's Monday again, ladies and gentlemen, but we got to get past that. Um, it's definitely been pretty eventful, obviously, watching the finals and Super Regionals go th- occur, obviously. Everybody but one, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, has punched their ticket to Omaha. And um, that's definitely going to be fun to see who makes it out of that last um, last bracket to finally punch their ticket to Omaha. But the NBA playoffs have been anything but boring. They've been pretty exciting. The same, obviously, with the Stanley Cup Finals. I know it's only been one game, but the Florida Panthers have definitely been strong. They definitely showed that the other night. But, Josh, I know we got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to cut, ch- cut the chit-chat, and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, looking at everything that's been going down to, uh, down, down through – uh, just the sports world in general, there's been a lot going on. There always is a lot going on. That's why you tune into our show so you can stay up to date with all of the best news when it comes to, uh, you know, just news updates, all that kind of stuff. And just kicking it back, chilling out and hearing true, authentic takes on sports and our true, true opinions on things, too. There's things that we get into uh, that, you know, the big networks just don't want to express to you, but we mm-hmm. do it all. Uh, So make sure if you like this show, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is, you can always uh, give us a follow, uh, give us a five-star review, help us grow over there. Uh, We thank everybody so much for all of your support. Also, the like button. I saw Jeremy giving the thumbs up, so better better make sure to throw that one in there too. Can't forget the like button. Yeah, absolutely. But before we get too far into it, I want to first mention our sponsors for this amazing show. Uh, and it is an amazing sponsor. That is Big Frig. Big Frig is a sponsor that we mention all the time because if you're like me and you're tired of lukewarm drinks during your outdoor adventures, look no further than Big Frig. They have high, they have uh, very high quality, tough tumblers and amazing rugged coolers that keep your beverages at the perfect temperature. Uh, talking about their tumblers first, whether you are sipping from your morning coffee or your afternoon tea. Uh, the Big Frig dump tumblers are built to perform with a double wall vacuum insulation. Your drinks stay hot for over five hours and cold for over 50 hours. Plus, they come in a variety of standard colors, so you can choose the one that matches your style the most. And their coolers, their Badland coolers, one of my favorites, uh, they are absolutely amazing. They're rugged, durable, and ready for adventure. From tailgating to camping, these coolers keep your food and drinks cold for days. The 20 quart uh, Badlands cooler is a fan favorite, like I mentioned. Our favorites, the one that I know Jeremy and I both have, uh, they are absolutely amazing. You, they don't get much better. And the, the Cross 5 Cattle Cooler is perfect for those who need a little extra storage. Uh, looking at, at what all Big Frig does, they do so much, not only just offering you the amazing product, but they also have cool things like custom branding. Uh, if you want to build your brand, Big Frig offers custom printed coolers perfect for tailgates, fundraisers, or even corporate events, making lo- long lasting impressions with your logo on a high quality cooler or a tumbler that stands out in any crowd. It's truly amazing. They've done it for us. I don't have mine down here with me right now. I have a, d- a different drink that I'm trying out uh, tonight. It's pretty good. Uh, just t- testing out something new out. But usually, I always have my Big Frig tumbler uh, or you know, bringing my cooler on the road with me. I work on the road a lot. Uh, we go to tailgates and, and camping and all kinds of stuff. So no matter what, Big Frig is the way to go. Visit BigFrig.com to explore their full range of products and elevate your beverage game. Plus, use the code RISING220 for 20% off your next order. Uh, remember, when it comes to keeping things cool, Big Frig has you covered. So again, go to BigFrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And use that code at the bottom of the screen. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0, RISING220 for 20% off. It's an amazing deal, amazing product. You do not want to miss out on everything that Big Frig has to offer. But let's go ahead and get into it. We've got a lot to get to, like we mentioned. So, Jeremy, 
Let's go ahead and get started with the NBA playoffs, starting off with what's been going on in the finals, uh, looking between Boston and Dallas. Uh, it has been a fun one uh, for one side and an excruciating, painful one for the other side. When you look at, you know, backing up, because we haven't really talked about game one yet, uh, almost losing by almost 20 points. Uh, so they lost by, by 18 points in game one. We were really just getting slaughtered. Mavericks could not get anything going, uh, and it seems like the Celtics just have their number. And then in Game 2, a little bit closer, but still couldn't pull it off, uh, and the Celtics end up winning 105-98. to uh, Ultimately, looking at Game 2, I mean, I felt like both teams looked like they were shooting the ball really well. Uh, it, it felt like both teams were doing pretty well on defense. It's just the Celtics have their number, and the Celtics have the Mavericks' number, and man, I, I just I'm looking at this, and I don't know what the Mavericks can do to pull off the upset and to come back. Especially being down two to zero, you've gotten yourself into a terrible position right now, uh, and and it's not looking good for them at all. Uh, I mean, you you look at at their entire roster. Of, of course, Luka Doncic uh, being kind of banged up and injured, and not really being able to be out there at full strength. That's been uh, taking a big toll on them. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I, I'm, I'm looking at it, man. I just, I, I have been trying to figure out what I could say that could be a positive note for the Mavericks. Because, like I mentioned, I'll root for the underdog. I like Luca. I like Kyrie. I like uh, Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, I guess no, he's not. He's not on the Mavs anymore. He's over on on the uh, Celtics. So I guess I can't even root for him for the Mavericks anymore. But you know, looking at the ownership too, I like like Mark Cuban quite a bit, uh, and and the type of owner that he is. So. Looking at this this Mavericks team, I want to cheer for them. I want to say that there's something I can give them as some sort of advice. I have nothing for them, though. I just don't think they have the matchups. And, I mean, they've got to be scared of a sweep, although I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to pull a game out. But, I mean, this is looking like maybe a five-game series to me. That's realistically what I was thinking, a five, maybe six-game series if the Mavericks are lucky. I mean, you look at what the first two games have brought to the table, I mean – Boston definitely came out strong, obviously, in game one, having a really good game. Like you said, almost beating them by uh, almost by 20, then being a 107-89 final. Then, to me, it always kind of seems like when you get that first game in the finals, it doesn't matter if it's in the NBA, NHL, or whatever the situation is. For the team that loses, and it, it, even on both sides of the ball, realistically, it just seems like it's kind of a little bit of a learning process just to see what this team's able to do and how they're able to do it. I mean, it's definitely one thing to watch it on film, but it's definitely a whole different thing to actually physically seeing it, doing it against them. And game two definitely was a little bit more interesting. Obviously, I know in the last couple of minutes of the fourth quarter, the Mavericks, they did have a little bit of a moment to where they could potentially get a rally going. I believe they were down only by yeah. like, five maybe i know at one point yeah like toward, in the fourth quarter they were down by like seven at one point and i thought man they, yeah. they've got a chance maybe they can get going on offense and do something but yeah i just i i don't see how they can come back i just i, I really don't i don't have an answer for them and i don't think they have an answer for it they the only answers i've ever heard in, in the press conferences from them it's not like oh well we need to focus on xyz or doing this better they just say oh we got to be better yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously you've got to be better because you're doing be terrible right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're you're not playing to – to me, it seems like they're not playing to their full potential. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Mavericks are a great roster and a great team, but it, to me it just seems like they're not fully bringing everything that they have out on the court. I mean, it's one thing to get in game two for the situation where they rallied up really close, but it just seemed like – at that moment to where Boston finally got their um, finally got back on that momentum swing, it just seemed like the Mavericks kind of left it out there and they didn't even fully try a little bit in my perspective. But I mean, you look at like stat wise, obviously Jason Tatum is leading for series in the stats, like averaging 17 points per game, 10 rebounds. And um, obviously, like you said, for Luka Doncic, he's averaging 31 points a game. And so it's not like he's definitely not putting points on the board. I mean, like I said, 31 points, 10 and a half rebounds. And it, I don't necessarily know what he could even do anymore. He's like I say, he's, it's not like he's not putting up points, but I mean, it's just the overall team aspect is just, they're not getting every shot that they normally have in the last couple series into the bucket. And the Boston Celtics, they have definitely just been all gas, no breaks. And 
don't get me wrong. Obviously, both teams are getting a little bit of foul trouble, but you got to put that behind you. Yes, you draw a foul or whatever the situation is. You got to put that behind you and not let that get into your mind too much because if it is, it's going to definitely haunt you for the entire game. Just you got to you got to put that to the side. You got to play your full potential all four quarters and get everything out there on the court. Yeah, and ultimately your stars just have to be stars the entire game. That's something I know definitely. that we've we've seen the Celtics deal uh, you know, with with issues of that in the past, they're not dealing with that at all this year. They're running through teams. They haven't had any issues this entire playoffs. And now getting to the finals, it looks like it's it's set. You might as well. I mean, if you're if you're looking to make some easy money, that I mean, it's not going to be very much money anymore. Uh, you might as well just put it on the Celtics to win it. And I, I mean, a sweep wouldn't surprise me based on how they're playing right now. But I, I'm going to call it. I think it's I think it's over in five at the most. I just mm-hmm. I, I don't see. I don't see what the Mavericks can do to really change this up. Um, and it's just, it's been pathetic. Um, but it looks like game three will be on Wednesday. Uh, maybe that can be a changing point. I believe that one, uh, let me check real quick. I believe that one should be That's back be in, in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, that one will be in Dallas for sure. So back at yeah. American Airlines Center, we'll see what they're able to do. Uh, I mean, that's that's what you have to hope for. Uh, you know, just hope, hope that something good can come out of this. Hopefully, you can find something to make it work. Maybe Kyrie just goes off and has a 60-point game. That's that's the only thing I can see. Uh, without Luka being 100%, uh, you know, I don't feel like the Mavs really have that big guy that's able to to compete uh, in there. You know, so it's just it's 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 tough. It's tough cheering for them right now just because I don't I don't see a way for them to get out alive. But congrats to the Boston Celtics for an NBA championship. You've already won. Mm-hmm. It. Might as well just give it up, right? Pretty much get their, get their hopes up. Maybe we can do that, and that's the way to get them down. We'll cheer for them and be like, "Ah, right, you guys got this in the bag. Nothing they can do. Get the, get their head a little high, and then you knock them down off the pedestal." Mm-hmm. But that's if about anything, the only thing. maybe just break the Boston Celtics four leaf clover on their jerseys, and maybe they'll break their luck for the Mavericks. Again, <laughs> at this point, you can never know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 insane. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, we can see a little bit more competitiveness. Maybe they mm-hmm. can at least push it to a game six, game seven, make it fun, uh, make Maybe. us make us have a little bit of fun watching the games. Because I'm on, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I, when I tuned into these games, the game one, I turned that one off really quick because they were killing them at halftime. I'm done. Yeah. I'm out. I don't want to watch this Man. anymore. I have I have no desire to sit here and watch crappy basketball. Um, you know, in game two, it was a little bit more competitive. Uh, I would turn the channel and watch some baseball, come back, stuff like that. So you know, it was it's it was a little different at least. Um, but ultimately, not a fun, not a fun uh, uh, series to watch overall. Hopefully, the Mavericks can get something going. Uh, I'm cheering for Mark Cuban and his team to do it, man. But let's go ahead and jump over. We're going to get to baseball, college baseball. But before we do that, we haven't had a chance to talk about the dynasty that we all love so much. Uh, and I know our fans love them. Uh, I know you love them. I know Blake loves them. Uh, of course, I love them. Oklahoma softball, I know this is old news, but we're going to get to it anyways. They didn't just get one. They didn't just get two. They didn't just get three. They didn't, what, they got four. They are back to back to back to back champions. I want to give it up for the Oklahoma softball crew. Those seniors put their their hearts into it, uh, you know, and, and I, I love it. Uh, we were talking about this for a while, Jeremy, leading up to the point, can they do it? We had total faith in them. Uh, if there was a way for me to have bet on them, I, the main, main sports books, I didn't see a way to bet on women's softball. I would have put my money on them on the beginning of the year because this, I mean, it just it felt like that's, they're, usually if you've got a team in it, uh, you know, for Oklahoma, for example, every year in Oklahoma uh, football, because I'm an Oklahoma fan, I sit there and I'm thinking, okay, well, we've got a chance, but these are the games that I'm kind of nervous about. For Oklahoma softball, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, we might drop a few in the regular season. We dropped we dropped uh, two series this year. That's That hasn't happened in this entire dynasty that they've had. Two series to Texas and Oklahoma State. I didn't really have much of a, much of a, a, a doubt that they were still going to win a national championship, even though they dropped two series throughout the season. You know, that's that's the kind of confidence that I had in these girls. Uh, they played their hearts out, had an amazing series, and ultimately, man, they dominated. When it came down to it, they lost to Florida. That was the only loss that they had, uh, and and that was more or less like a hey, let's take it easy kind of game. It felt like, uh, and and Florida played really well. They they did. They played very well. Uh, obviously being able to beat Oklahoma, but then Oklahoma goes on, whoops Texas in two games straight, almost had a walk-off home run from Kinsey Hansen, couldn't quite get it there, 
um, but a, an amazing run and man, four in a row. What a dynasty. Congratulations, obviously, to Patty Gasol, all the seniors and everything that they they did this entire four years. It was definitely mind blowing to see the only team now. Obviously, UCLA was the one that had the three peat, but there's no other team outside of the Oklahoma Sooners softball program that has had a four peat. I mean, what more can you really say about their softball program? This is a team that brings their A game every single game, night in and night out. And you you can't ask any more for uh for a great team just because they've obviously as you as I've said, they're the only four P team to ever do this now. I mean obviously you look at some of the seniors like um like May, um Jennings, Coleman, Hansen, Boone, I mean all of them have just been complete superstars. And it goes to show you like even the leadership just because looking down to like the underclass and the freshmen, the sophomores, even some of the juniors, I mean, they may obviously have their own mindset and what they want to do for the game. But in all reality, you got to look up to these seniors just because they know what it takes to win a ring. And obviously, as you can see, they must have taken a lot of notes and taken a lot of things to, to credit just whether it be from the seniors or Patty Gasso, I mean, they have definitely blown everybody's expectation. And to be completely honest with you, Josh, I don't think there's any, there's going to be anybody else that will get a four peat. Yeah, no, I, I I don't see it happening. I mean, I will say uh, because I, I'm I'm being honest. So the way that I had confidence in them throughout this entire season, that's because of the roster that they had. Going into next season, I don't think this is going to be the same dominant Oklahoma you see. Who knows? Maybe they still have it in them. Maybe they, maybe the the young the young players step up and they come out and they win another one. Or even I, I think they can get close. I think they will still make the you know women's college World Series. But I don't see a five peat coming uh, just because you're like you named off a bunch of names there. You've got Tiara Jennings. You've got Riley Boone. Jada Coleman. Uh, you know, there's the, the uh, Sid Sanders. Uh, Kelly Maxwell was a transfer from Oklahoma State. She grew up an Oklahoma fan. She wanted to go to Oklahoma, didn't get the offer there, went to Oklahoma State, played there for, I think, three or four years, uh, transfers over to Oklahoma to come in and have an outstanding year. She was an outstanding pitcher at Oklahoma State. Uh, I hated facing her at Oklahoma State, but she comes, transfers to Oklahoma, uh, gets to play for the team she ultimately wanted to play for, and she ends up winning a national championship and doing it in, a, in an amazing fashion. I had a really hard time early in the year cheering for her, I'll be honest, because I'm like, man, Oklahoma State girl coming over, and we just lost Jordy Ball, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time. I love Nicole May, uh, Kirsten Deal, another chick that came in to help us out. Uh, she, she had an amazing season as well. But, uh, I mean, the, 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 the names on that roster, there's, there's definitely some young girls too, like uh, I, I think – uh, Cassidy Pickering being another and one of the young girls that you look at her, uh, or even uh, Ella Parker. Uh, you know, there's there's some girls on that that squad that are going to come back and keep that legacy going. They're still going to be a tough team. They're still going to be the Alabama uh, of college softball. But even Alabama ha- had their down years where they weren't making it to the national championship or winning the national championship. Uh, and mm-hmm. so, you know, I, I do think that the dynasty might be coming to a close, but I don't think it's over. You know, I think there's still going to be a, a dang tough team. Uh, SEC, pay attention, too, because you just had Oklahoma State, uh, Texas, and Oklahoma, uh, all, all three Big 12 teams. Uh, two of those Big 12 teams are going to come to the SEC next year. So, right. SEC, take note. You're going to have two. Not, not that they're going to come in and run the SEC. I'm not saying that. Uh, I think they're going to be very good in the SEC, though. And I think that's going to be very exciting for them going over. Absolutely. But, Josh, yeah. you also got to think about this. In the last four years, Oklahoma softball has gone 235 and 15. What more can you really say about that? Yeah, that's that's incredible. Well, and and I, I forget the number, too. The amount of run rules that they've had is just crazy. They've, they, they haven't just been winning. They've been dominant. Last year they only won or they only lost one game the entire season to Baylor. They dropped they dropped one to Baylor early early in the season. That was it, uh, you know. And so outside of that, I mean, and then this year what they had six regular regular season uh, losses, seven total. So I mean, you, you just look at what they've done. They have been 
so dominant and and not just winning games but dominating uh and yeah i mean it's it's been a crazy dynasty i dare to say the greatest dynasty of all time but i will at least back off and say of my lifetime i i I will i will try to back off and say at least that much but I, i i challenge everybody i mean is there a dynasty better than the oklahoma sooner softball team I'm I'm biased, 100%. I'll admit that. So, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the greatest dynasty of all time. The way that they've, I, I think maybe you could say South Carolina uh, basketball or, or UConn basketball, uh, mm-hmm. both men and women's. Those are some great dynasties. So, I mean, sure, I'll, I'll take some arguments, but comment down below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. But let's go ahead and jump over. Uh, what we had on the on the list was college baseball, but we didn't get to talk about my Sooners, so we had to jump back and. Go off on a little rant for that. So uh, starting off, like you said, there is one game, and I meant to have it pulled up for me so I can keep on. Ooh, okay. So NC State tied it up. I I looked at it earlier. uh, They were down 2-0 to in the second inning. So that is the last game, Georgia versus NC State. That is the last game to decide who will be going on to Omaha to to fill the last spot. And I believe if the bracket plays out the way that it shows, I believe they would go against Kentucky. So starting off over on uh, the left-hand side of the bracket over in the Knoxville, uh, we've got Tennessee, the, the Tennessee, Florida State, uh, and then you've got Virginia and North Carolina, and then you've also got Texas A&M, Florida, and then Kentucky and the winner of tonight's game, NC State and Georgia. I just want to throw it out there. I, I, wanted, I, I threw it out there. I thought that the biggest one that seemed like an upset that I don't think a lot of people would have picked was NC State. Versus Georgia, NC State rocked them game one. That was a very fun game to watch. Game yeah. two, Georgia came out and they were rocking. Uh, it's in Athens. You have to remember that. So that that stadium is probably going crazy tonight. I wish I had it on so I could be watching it. Um, but we've got to bring this stuff to you guys. So yes, we sacrifice every once in a while for our listeners, for our viewership. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's been a really fun one. Uh, Tennessee they dropped a game to Evansville and I thought, man, could Evansville really squeeze their way in. Uh, And then I was also watching UConn thinking, I want to see how good UConn is. I want to cheer for UConn because they beat my Sooners to knock them out. So come on, UConn, you better do something. And then they kind of got killed by Florida State. Uh, And so that wasn't, that wasn't any fun to watch that. Uh, And then, you know, Virginia taking care of uh, Kansas State. And, you know, ultimately uh, North Carolina was another one just taking care of business. Uh, it, it felt like a lot of these, these games, even the, I think the big one that kind of shocked me a little is that I was looking at Oregon thinking that they could be an upset, come in there and, and end up beating a and um, But a and ran the table with them. They won 10 to six and then 15 to nine, uh, some high scoring games. But uh, you know, the, the closest one, the most fun one to watch, I think the Tennessee Evansville was fun to watch for the most part, just because you had a little bit of hope for Evansville until game three when Tennessee won 12 to one. Um, But then of course the only other one that was really fun to watch is the one that's going on right now uh, in Athens. You know, you look at that matchup, it's been really fun. You had NC state rock Georgia 18 to one. And then you had uh, Georgia come back 11 to two. So you just had two polar opposite games, really fun series right now. And it's going to decide who gets to go to Omaha, which Jeremy, you and I were planning to make it down there. So yes, sir. I want to hear from you guys, too, what games, what teams, because we know for the most part which teams are going to be there. Which teams should Jeremy and I be focusing on? Which ones? Because uh, we're going to we're going to try to get, at least go to one game uh, and then also want to try to reach out to you guys. If you guys are in the Omaha area, add us on, on social media. You can follow us on social media, uh, Rising to the Occasion. Just search for us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. So search for us and hit us up if, if you're going to be in the area. We'd love to to link up because uh, we're, we're planning on walking around and you could be on the camera. Uh, so just throwing that out there. We've got some big, big things in the works that we're trying to make for content wise down there. So let us know. Uh, and then also let us know if you've been to Omaha before, because we've never gone down there for the festivities. I know some of the festivities. What are your favorite festivities to go to? Because I know like I think Rocco's is one that we we're going to have to go to. Uh, I yeah. saw that Lot C, I think Herd at Sports, should have an event going on in Lot C. Not not an event, but they'll have a table over and a big family-friendly event. Uh, and then also I think Lot D is where all the hardcore tailgating is going on, so we'll have to drop by there and see what's going on over there in Lot D. For sure. Uh, but, you know, keep an eye out for us. We will be around. Uh, other Herd at personalities will be around as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for us. We'd love to 
to see you guys. But uh, Jeremy, what have you thought so much or so far about all of this in the Super Regionals, man? What I've honestly thought about these Super Regionals is there was a lot more sweeping games than what I kind of anticipated a little bit. Yeah, I, I was expecting more to get to these game three situations. I think it's going to be a battle to where everybody's fighting to get to Omaha, but obviously every game, I mean, not get every game, but every series minus the one that's on tonight Two. and, te- and yeah, yeah and, and, and the Knoxville series, that's the only one that hasn't been a sweep that kind of really surprised me. Like I just said, but I mean, you look at a lot of these teams and what they were able to do in those, in those moments to where you think you're down, then all of a sudden, the, you find the bats of the ball, and then all of a sudden the runs just start flying. I mean, they definitely found that out in Oregon against um, against Texas A and M. That was definitely really surprising because I was watching the game. I was thinking o- Oregon's got this in the bag, and then all of a sudden um, Oregon's flying back to Oregon, and they were really wishing that that seventh inning wasn't a thing anymore. But I mean, it's definitely been a fun a fun atmosphere to obviously watch and see all these teams and make their way to Omaha. But Josh, I'm going to be, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to pick between NC state and Georgia to make it to Omaha, who are you going to pick? I already made my pick. I'm sticking with NC state. Like I said, it's, it's okay. a tough one. You're playing in, in Athens for a Athens. game three. True. True. This is, this is going to be insane, but you don't have, your fans aren't too far away. North Carolina, that what, that's the state right above them. Maybe two states above them trying to think geographically i think they're touching states right or not not north carolina north carolina wouldn't be south carolina would be yeah Uh, so you know but still you've got fans pretty close in that area uh so i i mean i'm I'm picking nc state but you know going over to the clemson florida matchup that one was really fun even though it was only two games it was so much closer than than a a sweep and tails uh clemson was so close from coming away from game one um, but Florida's bats were just swinging ten to seven in that one, and then thirteen innings in game two, uh, and Clemson was, kept on having some clutch moments to keep themselves alive. That was a really fun one. Uh, that one just took forever, uh, so that yeah. was a, that was a really fun game to watch. Uh, but that one, ended, you know, Florida ended up winning eleven to ten, uh, just incredible in thirteen innings. But yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, Oregon, Texas A&M. That was surprising to see Oregon not really put up much of a fight. Um, but then Oregon State against Kentucky, that was one that I thought Oregon State had a chance to come out against Kentucky and possibly win the series. Um, but they kind of got that, they got whooped game one. Yeah, uh, and then game two kept it really close, uh, just couldn't pull it out, ended up losing. And a very good defensive game, uh, very good pitching in, in game two. Uh, just Kentucky ended up winning three to two. And so I think that's that's fun. If NC State does win right now, uh, if, if I'm correct and they go against Kentucky, uh, then. That's that's one that I'm I'm sitting there I'm cheering for NC State at this point, man. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 a really fun one to look at. But yeah, I mean it's it's there's been a lot of really close fun games to watch. At least maybe even close for a moment uh, where one team takes over. But you're right, the fact that there hasn't been hard there's only been two game threes in this entire super regionals. That's surprising. I, I I kind of wonder, uh, and I don't know how how to look this up, but I I'm I'm, I'm wanting to look this up to see. Uh, how how many times has it has it been where the, there's only been three or less uh, game threes, or I guess two or less game threes? Because that seems really small to me. Um, I mean, if you guys know, make sure to throw that in the comments down below too because that's, that's interesting to me that there would only be two game threes in the Super Regionals. Yeah, that's, that's, sh- that's surprising. Yeah, but uh, let's jump over, man. Uh, one that I know you and I were having a really fun time watching – Game one, we had a, a watch party. Uh, stay tuned because we're talking about possibly a watch party on Saturday. If we get some some love and some some likes, maybe we'll do another watch party on Saturday night uh, for game two, or I guess it'd be game four at that point. Um, but I think game two should be going on tonight, right? No, it's tomorrow. Uh, no, it's tonight. Is it tonight? Yeah, yeah. So it's Saturday. Oh. Yesterday was Sunday. Yeah, well, it's Sunday. Monday. I was thinking so yeah. tonight, but yeah, tomorrow it'll be over with. Um, but yeah. Looking at, at that series, uh, game one was really fun. It started exactly how Jeremy and I were talking about how we felt. Uh, it just felt like the Oilers came out really fast. The Panthers let them let them do their thing and just played good defense. Uh, even though the Oilers had some really good opportunities, Sergei Bobrovsky, man, that guy was just all over the place, all over the net, 
was not letting anything go in. Uh, Edmonton took 32 shots on goal, and he blocked every single one of them. Florida ended up ended up winning with a a, a goal per period, three to zero, uh, with a, a shutout. I think he's the oldest to ever have a a, a shutout in the in the finals uh, in game one. The oldest goalie ever uh, to to have to to record a uh, shutout in, in the finals shutout. game one, which is really crazy. Um, but we talk about this a lot. The physicality is what set what sets the tone. Who's going to be more physical and who's going to sit out there? You know, who's going to go out on the ice and try to take the other team's head off? Basically, that's probably who I'm going to pick to win. Uh, and the Florida Panthers ended up whooping them with 57 hits compared to the Oilers 32. Uh, we we saw that we were like, man, dude, there is just nonstop big hit after big hit, and a lot of it's coming from Florida. Even though it felt like the Oilers were the faster team, they were moving around the ice a lot and keeping possession of the puck a lot. They weren't getting solid shots on goal a whole lot. Um, and then for Florida, they couldn't really get a whole lot on goal, but they were very selective in what they shot, only shooting 18 shots on goal and scoring 13. For every six shots, they were scoring a goal. Uh, the first shot of the, go- the game, we were sitting there watching it and like, oh my gosh, first shot? No, wait, let me let me double check that. Yeah, that was the first shot of the game. And they score. It was it was just an all all-out team effort very good defense and and forcing the Oilers to play at the at their own pace, uh, you know, like to, to force the Oilers to pay, play at the Panthers' pace. So I, I just I, I look at the Panthers. Like I said before, I think the Panthers look like the best team in the NHL right now. After beating the Rangers, they look like the best team in the NHL, uh, and so I, I like their odds a lot. Uh, and I, I think they could possibly come out alive with this one. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Watching that first game. There was a lot of wows. There was a lot of big hits. There was a lot of mind-blowing saves. And overall, it was just a really fun game just to watch. I mean, if I had to grade, honestly, the Florida Panthers and the Edmonton Oilers, for the Florida Panthers, I'm going to be honest with you, i give them an A, to be completely honest with you. I mean, they basically played a perfect game, honestly, on Saturday. I, I mean, I'll give them an you know, A+. Plus. I don't know how it, how it gets any better than that. Yeah, I mean, and, the and honestly, kill, for the Oilers, I'm I'm probably giving the Oilers like a B. B plus. Yeah, I'm giving I mean, them a B a B plus. I mean, I I think the Oilers played pretty well. They, yeah. they got a lot of good looks on goal. They just couldn't get past Sergey. Uh, yeah. You know, goalie Bob was just sitting there <laughs> blocking everything. Man, I mean, it was. I I thought it was a really good game. It, it felt we were talking about that the whole time too. This feels like such a close game, but. You know, the, it feels like it's leaning towards the Oilers when you're watching it, but then you look at the scoreboard and somehow the Panthers come out with the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I, I think the Oilers played really well. It's just the, the Panthers have their number. The Panthers know how to beat them, and, and yeah. they're doing so well. And, and like I said, the aggression, I think being the more aggressive team, just about in every sport, being the more aggressive team is going to help you win games. It's going to propel you over the other. Oh, for sure. I mean, like I said, for the Florida Panthers, penalty kill stood amazing. They were three for three yeah. on the penalty kill, blocking shots, laying your body on the line. This is the finals here. You got to do that. I mean, overall, you look at the overall expectation for the Florida Panthers. Sergey Bobrovsky not making one, but two amazing full spread saves on a breakaway. One was from Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and I don't know why I'm drawing a blank McDavid on the other David was guy. the other one, I think. It was, was it McDavid? I'm pretty sure it was McDavid on the other. Um, but still, I mean, I know McDavid just, had a, a few really good looks on, on net. Oh yeah. And oh, couldn't yeah. get it past Bob. Yeah. Bob was just doing Bob things and he was just sticking out like a sore thumb and just playing absolutely incredible. now, like I said, looking for the Edmonton Oilers perspective, don't get me wrong. Like, like I said, I give them a B, but like the Oilers were, they were really looking like searching for answers just because they couldn't do anything to get anything past Bobrovsky. I mean, they finished with 33 shots, 22 scoring chances, and 13 high danger chances. Do you know how much it takes to get one shot off, obviously, and turn the whole table and make it a completely different game? I mean, look, they limited the Panthers to 18 shots. And that's mind boggling. Like, they only had six scoring chances. So, literally, a third out of their shots were scoring chances. I mean, Nothing against Stuart Skinner. Obviously, Stuart Skinner is a miraculous goalie here, but unfortunately, he just couldn't get 
he just couldn't get everything stopped like Bobrovsky did. And obviously, when we saw the first goal for Florida, when um, for Hagee obviously got that shot off, that was I I didn't think it was going to go in just because I know there wasn't very much room below that blocker, but still, obviously, Verhage buried in the back of the net, and it was just an overall great game for the Florida Panthers. Like I said, near perfect game for them, and if they stick to this way like they do now, I. I don't know how you can really stop these guys, but I mean, um, I know I was giving you a little bit of crap earlier when we were doing the live stream and saying, is it too early to give Bob the con my trophy? But I mean, uh, if he keeps playing like this, Josh, they, it's kind of a little bit obvious here to give Bob the con my trophy here. If I had to say so for myself. Yeah. I mean, he, he played an amazing game. Uh, just sitting one there. One more thing you asked for game one shutout. Yeah, and and they won. The, the Panthers won sixty percent of the faceoffs. Um, they they because really Edmonton they had fifty three shots total. Uh, only thirty two of them counted as as on goal uh, because twenty one blocked shots. That you're you've got guys putting them themselves at risk. Uh, you you know how it feels, Jeremy. You, uh, we, we both not been good. hit by a puck. Uh, and yeah, I mean. Both of us have been hit with the puck with and without pads. It's not fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's crazy. You, you look at what this team did just overall, everything that they were able to do. Like you said, three for three on on PK unit, uh, you know, playing very well there and only uh, allowing two power play uh, opportunities for the Edmonton Oilers. Overall, pretty clean game. It was chippy. There was definitely a lot of times where you got guys kind of shoving and, and maybe trying to throw a punch here and there, but nothing where the refs were deeming it uh, you know, worthy of a penalty in the finals. Uh, so, yeah. you know, it's, it, it was, it was a really, really good game. I think Sergei Bobrovsky, obviously, obviously a guy to recognize. I think Carter Verhege for scoring that first goal on the first shot of the game. That's mm-hmm. a really big momentum boost for your Definitely. team. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really fun. I, I do think Edmonton's going to come back. I think they're going to have a couple of wins in here. I don't think they're going to go down without, without swinging. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm, I'm cheering for them to keep it close. Cause like I said, I'm, I like the, I like the Oilers team. I like them a lot, but uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm still sticking with my guns. I want the Americans to keep that cup over here in the U S of a keep it here. It's our cup. It's not going to Canada, not to that fake country up North, but Anything else on the on the uh, NHL playoffs before we head over to the two minute warning? <sighs> if you haven't drills. watched, if you haven't watched any of the NHL finals, I would definitely highly recommend it just because you're going to be in for a show, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got to say. If you're watching this right now and you still haven't seen anything, you've already missed two games because we're yeah. we're talking about this before game two. It'll be released after game two. So, uh, yeah, definitely gotta gotta keep keep in touch with with the NHL Stanley Cup finals because they are absolutely fun. Uh, you know, if we, we, we you, t- you bring this up all the time uh, that, you know, playoff hockey is so much more fun to watch. There's nothing like it, but playoff you know, Stanley Cup finals hockey, man, that doesn't get any better sure. than that. So if you're not a hockey fan and you want to get into the into hockey, this is the time to do it. Whenever you're watching two teams put everything on the line, uh, that's that's when it's really fun. But Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Let's get to the two minute drill. And for those who don't know what the two minute drill is, it's where Jeremy will bring up some of the top headlines in sports news uh, that, and, and he will give them to both me and Blake, just me tonight, because there is no Blake. Uh, we've got two minutes to respond and, and uh, respond to each of these headlines. Jeremy, what yep. do we have for the two minute drill tonight? All right. First off on the two minute drill tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we got Dan Hurley turning down a substantial deal, a $70 million job that he could have gone to the L.A. Lakers for six years at $70 million, and he turned it down to stay with UConn. Josh, I know his current contract with UConn is a six-year, $32.1 million deal, but Josh, are you a little surprised that he turned it down just because he loves UConn so much that he wants to stay there, or what's your thoughts about this overall thing? Yeah, I mean, looking at it, like you said, it's like half, less than half uh, of the – Salary now, you know he's he's getting less of less than half of what he would have gotten because he currently signed a six year thirty two point one million deer deal. I think it was last season with the with the Yukon Huskies. So uh, you know, and, and so looking at the Lakers, they would have also had to pay, pay out. Uh, I forget the number, but they would have had to pay out a pretty significant price uh, of that contract. It was just you know a couple million dollars or something, but still, 
Uh, that's that's a lot because I don't have that kind of money in my bank account. <laughs> but you know, turning down a six year, seventy million dollar deal to go be an NBA coach, which that's what that's what Hurley wants to be is he wants to be an NBA coach. Uh, and and ultimately, I think it's clear, uh, and maybe it's even clearer now that he really is just holding off for that Knicks job. That's what he really wants. But I think it's also a little bit of, you know, dedication to the team and, and loyalty to the team that he's currently with. I love this move from a man because Dan Hurley is a legend in the sport. and He's got an opportunity to to go make history uh, with the Yukon Huskies. He's already made history with, with what he's done there so far. Uh, and, and, I mean, he's got a dominant team, and I don't think they're going away, especially if they're able to, to keep Hurley on with them. Uh, and so the fact that he goes back to, to UConn, I love this move from him. Uh, I love seeing the, the loyalty from him. Uh, and yeah, ultimately, it's 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 awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for him uh, because I'm one of the guys that counted him out last year thinking they're too hot in the regular season. There's no way they're going to carry it over to March Madness and be able to go all the way and win it. And sure enough, he does. Uh, they just keep that fire going. I, I'm excited for him. Yeah, I am too. Then I was really surprised that they turned it down, but obviously UConn is a really special home for him. But I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep rolling for everybody. Obviously, the next one, Darren Waller. Unfortunately, the news that we didn't want to hear, but time is time. He announced his retirement after nine seasons in the NFL. Waller wasn't necessarily happy about obviously his life after the scary near-death experience recently that he just went through. But, Josh, I know obviously nine years is a good chunk of time playing in the NFL. Obviously, it takes a toll on your body and takes everything. Um, first things first, obviously, we wish nothing but the best for a retirement for Darren Waller. And, Josh, um, kind of give us a little bit about Darren Waller for people who don't necessarily know a little bit about Darren Waller and what he went through. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know I saw a little bit of, uh, I don't know if it was an interview or just him coming out and speaking. I just saw the clip of him him mentioning, you know, a, a really scary situation for him. First of all, you know, he's he's gone through a really tough time with uh, a, a breakup, you know, with uh, going through a divorce with a beautiful former basketball uh, star at UConn, I believe, and now currently with the Los Angeles Aces, I think is what it is. But Kelsey Plum, I so. she is gorgeous. Uh, and so, you know, I had, don't blame him one bit for – uh, being you know upset about losing that you know and that that sucks uh, and so he's going through that and then apparently he went through you know he went through some depression with that is what I'm understanding but he also had a moment where uh, he woke up at night something along those lines where he had something wrong with his heart uh, and and his heart was racing and he couldn't hardly breathe uh, and it was probably just a, a high level of anxiety that caused a a, a maybe a cardiac arrest type feeling. That's what I'm assuming. I didn't read a whole lot into it. Uh, I don't know if the whole lot was even offered to the public, but a scary situation, whatever it was uh, that he went through where uh, apparently it was life threatening. Uh, that's, that's what I, what I've heard from him uh, And So I'll take his word on it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's that, that, you know, for him, he's, he's just, it's not that he's, it's not that he doesn't have a love for the game anymore. Uh, it's not that he doesn't love the fans, uh, and he just he's just ready to step away from football and focus on on other things in life. And so, uh, all the power to him, Darren Waller. You have been a phenomenal tight end for the the, the nine years that you were in it. Uh, I believe nine seasons, if I'm correct, on that. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, just you, you've had an amazing career, man. You don't have anything else to prove to to any of us. And so, yeah, just happy for him. Uh, hopefully, retirement goes well for him, and hopefully, he's able to to fix some of the things that he's not happy about within his life. Absolutely. Nothing but thought and prayers to Darren Wallet. And like I said, happy retirement. Hope everything goes good for you and get back on the right track. But moving on to the next one's Randy Gregory suing the NFL and the Denver Broncos for discrimination, which was um, a big monumental thing. Um, the league fined Gregory over half a million dollars, 532000 to be exact, ladies and gentlemen, for the use of THC that Gregory is saying um, it was prescribed it was a prescribed drug that is legal in the state of Colorado. And also um, he decided to sue the league, like I said, and dragging the Broncos into it as well, stating that it's wrong for um, wrong for them to find him for something that is totally legal for any other citizen in the state. I mean, Josh, do you think this is something that is completely blown out of proportion or do you think this is a, um, a serious matter that obviously needs to be brought up to the table, which it obviously is? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little curious on some of the deep details on this. 
when I when I think of Randy Gregory, for those who who don't know who Randy Gregory is, an amazing defensive end, basically uh, basically the heir uh, to Indominic and Sue at Nebraska. Uh, that's that's pretty much you know how how he was. I guess Jared Crick was kind of there with with Indominic and Sue, and Randy Gregory was shortly after. I mean, he was a, a monster, uh, able to get in the backfield, a, a phenomenal. A defensive player being able to get in the backfield, stop the run, get to the quarterback. It didn't matter what you needed him to do; he was going to do it. He goes to get drafted in the NFL, doesn't pass a drug test, has THC in his system at that time. So, uh, I don't know when I'm looking at this. Yeah, you can say it was a prescribed drug all you want, but the league has their their set standard, their set rules that it doesn't matter. Uh, you can't have THC in your system. You can't use marijuana. Uh, that's just that's 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 a, a league rule. Uh, you you think of of uh, now I'm drawing a blank on, on his name too. It was a dude. Uh, uh, he was a, a great wide receiver for the Browns. Went out to the Seattle uh, Seahawks for a little while. Um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on his name. Amazing wide receiver, and 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 he was, he kept on getting kicked out of the out. Uh, uh, you know, getting suspended. Because he was using marijuana, you can't use marijuana in the NFL. I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, it sucks that he was fined that much, but you know the rules. You you know what you're not allowed to have. So tell the doctor, hey, I understand that that's legal here in Colorado, but I'm not allowed to because my job in the NFL says I'm not allowed to use that. Please, can you can you find some other way? Or you go and consult the NFL. You consult your your team, your your, your coaches, your the, the staff there, the GM. You consult them before before taking it and failing your drug test. To me, you're, you've you've made too many bonehead mistakes, in my opinion, and and that's how you got here. Yeah, I mean, hey, you gotta you gotta obey by the rules, and it's definitely not like you're a rookie to where you don't understand these rules. But you've been in the league long enough; I think you should understand the rules by now. But moving on to our next topic, the college football playoff game schedules have been announced, ladies and gentlemen. Then. Looking at it, Josh, did we have a little bit of a clip of it or no? Yeah, I we did. Know yeah, we, we did. did. Okay, perfect. For sure. So obviously, so looking at the clip, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the first round played first game on Friday, December twentieth, and three of them on Saturday, December twenty first. Now looking at it, the Fiesta Bowl will be played on Tuesday, the thirty first, on New Year's Day, on New Year's Eve. The Peach Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl is getting moved, like it always is, to January first, New Year's Day. Then um, the Orange Bowl and Cotton Bowl the semifinals the Thursday and Friday, January 9th and 10th. And the national championship is Monday. I really, they really need to make find a way to make that a holiday for all of us college football fans to get out of work that that next day. Um, it's on a Monday, ladies and gentlemen, January 20th. But Josh, I know looking at the college playoff schedule, I know a lot of people are already anticipating to see what the college football is going to bring for us in this upcoming season. Um, give me your thoughts a little bit about the college football playoff schedule and everything about it now. I mean, what's not to be excited about this other than, like you said, no. we, we talk about that all the time. Mondays, you can't do a, a national championship game on a Monday. What are you thinking? No. You know, as many times Why? as we sit here and complain about it, give us the reins. Let us be the committee that makes these decisions. Uh, you know, we, we've we've got some other media personnel that I would totally reach out to and have them join because they're they have you know Josh Pate, uh, the Crane and Company guys. Uh, I would even probably throw guys maybe like uh, Josh Paquel, you know, over with on three. Uh, I feel like there's some other guys that we could reach out to that have a half, a bra- half a brain that we could get on this committee and we could all put together our, our brains and, and come up with a better schedule. But to get off of that that uh, that portion of it, you know, to get off the rant, man, what is there not to be excited about? You've got college football starting on the 20th uh, and then you go uh, three games on the 21st and then you know, the, the, what is that? Ten days later, you have the Fiesta Bowl, and then uh, you know a couple more games the very next day, and then you know you go on uh, to the ninth and tenth. I mean, there's a ton of important, not just college football, important college football. Yeah, we we can talk about player safety all we want. We can find other ways to be safe. Give me more college football. I am not going to complain about this whatsoever. Do I think it's too many teams for a playoff system? Yes, but I love to see college football. Uh, so I am not going to complain about seeing more college football. I love it. Uh, I'm I'm really excited. I was really happy to see that that show up. So yeah, I think this is this is really fun. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it, man. 
Yeah, definitely. I'm really looking forward to it, obviously, for college football upcoming this season. But moving on to our last topic of the two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, we got the 1983 NC State basketball title team. And the members of them are suing the NCAA over um, over the NIL compensation. Now, um, obviously, for when they were suing, they were for using their name, image, likeness without their permission for providing compensation, like I just said, ladies and gentlemen. Josh, I know there's a lot of things going around, obviously now, especially with NIL and stuff like that. Um, I know this was in 1983. Do you think this is some old news that should have been taken care of a long time ago? Or do you think that obviously this is another civil matter that needs to be attended to? Yeah. So to break it down a little further uh, is, you know, just looking at that. So a big reason why they're coming out with this that 1983 uh, team, uh, whenever they they won, they were under Jim uh, Vovano, uh, a, a legendary team that came away with some really close wins. Uh, you know, kind of a Cinderella story. They end up winning the national championship in in the men's basketball tournament. Um, you know, the reason why they're suing them is because this team they were kind of known as the Cardiac Pack. Um, you know, the Wolf Pack, uh, Cardiac Pack, because they had all these close games that gave you a heart attack. Uh, so you know, they were they were known as the Cardiac Pack. And there's a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of clips from that Cardiac Pack team that get used throughout the years. They've, they've been used in the NCAA tournament. Uh, one of the biggest ones being their their 54-52 win over Houston when Lorenzo Charles, uh, you know, had a big dunk in the final seconds. So that's that's kind of where a lot of this comes from. That's why they're they're saying that they deserve some sort of NIL compensation. Uh, you know, and so they're, they're saying that you used all of this and made so much money off of these clips we, we deserve something. Well, I mean, that's that. I mean, every single college athlete in the past could say that you've, you filmed us and we were on television. If, if you were on television at one point or uh, another, they were making money off of you. Uh, if you played on a team at one point or another, they were making money off of you. And for your name, image and likeness, that's why we have an NIL today. I don't know. I mean, personally, I feel like Going this far seems a little petty to me. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning totally falls behind. If it was me, sorry guys, I'm out. I mean, that's that. I get where you're coming from, but it just seems too blown out of proportion to me. I think you're kind of complaining about it a little too much at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, they weren't they weren't selling jerseys with your name on it. They weren't, uh, you know. The, the recent stuff that came out is that they weren't putting you in video games without your your consent. I, I just I don't understand why you would come at them now, uh, you know. And so it, yeah, it it seems like this should just be, you know, in the past. Uh, they use your clips. You you became famous from being on that team. Just live in the glory. Uh, let let yourselves be known as legends and just kind of move on. I guess I'm just confused um, by the by the whole situation, honestly. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like, you, what was in, what's in the past is in the past. Like, nothing against the players or anything at all. I mean, but to me, it it's kind of a little bit blown out of proportion. But um, I'm gonna just keep that to myself a little bit. But Josh, well, and you know, it's it's not to say that the NCAA doesn't deserve it. Do, do, no, do I want the NCAA to be taken out of the equation? Yeah, outside yeah. of, I mean, for football, for sure. Uh, and and overall, I don't like the NCAA. I just think they're a terrible organization. They have, uh, you know, terrible judgment. Uh, they they, yeah. So do I think they deserve it? Sure, but I just don't know if this is the right move. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm in the same boat. I don't think this is necessarily right, but um, we're obviously not on that committee, and we don't get to say anything. But Josh, that is it for the two man drill. And unfortunately, Josh. It's closing time, ladies and gentlemen. Closing time. Closing time. Uh, Turn off all the lights because, yeah, that's all we got for you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in, uh, for always tuning in. We we love everybody who's able to tune in and giving us this opportunity to make a hobby into kind of a side gig, into you know something that we strive to do. We we have so much fun doing this, and it makes it even more fun that you guys are also enjoying it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button as well and comment down below. Uh, we've, we've thrown out plenty of stuff for you guys to comment about. So please comment down below. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, X formerly known as Twitter, all of that fun stuff. So you can go follow us on there. 
Uh, and you can always f- show us some love on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts by giving us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us over there. You can check out all that we do over on rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com. Huge thanks to Herd at Sports. You can check out everything from Herd at Sports at herdatsports.com as well. Uh, make sure to stay tuned. Uh, again, follow us on social media for all of our upcoming events and upcoming, uh, you know, whatever extra content we end up coming out with. Uh, I know we've got some some very exciting things in the works right now, so make sure to stay tuned. Uh, again, we thank you all so much for all the love, all the support. We'll catch you next time.